I hate that name! So this is part three of my Back to the Future Mr. Fusion build. Last time we looked at putting the lid together, which was 3D printed in multiple sections, which have all been stuck together with acetone, and then we did acetone vapour bath smoothing. So the, the material it's printed in is ABS, and that dissolves in acetone. So um, the normal process for acetone vapour bath smoothing would be to put the piece in a metal or glass container and boil acetone by having a heat source underneath and the vapour eats away the piece and smooths it out. So I decided to try another method which I'd heard about which was doing it cold. So we didn't boil the acetone, we just put acetone in a container. I've still got the container here. It's got paper towels stuck all around the outside with magnets um, and we doused those in acetone. And I put the piece in overnight because I didn't expect it to work very well at all. Um, and in fact what happened, it worked too well and lots of the um, plastic has slumped. It's completely lost definition. It's very smooth and glossy. These were quite sharp angles before. But we've actually effectively ruined the piece and loads of it's um, got sort of stretch marks in the plastic. And the edge is really rounded instead of square. So I, I mentioned I was going to try and clean this piece up. And I wasn't sure how that was going to go, but what I in fact decided to do instead was print another one. So now I've got two of them. The one on the left is the one that I left in for about five hours instead of 12. And you can see the uh, definition is much sharper, but it is um, nice and glossy all over. So the seam lines you can still see because the plastic's slightly translucent. But um, on the whole, all of the build lines have completely gone. That's really glossy and smooth. So that fits quite nicely onto the base which I made, which I made in uh, between parts one and part two. There we go. And then obviously the coffee grinder, the Krups 223, goes on top, and that makes the complete Mr. Fusion. So we've got a few pieces to make, which are the catch parts, and the red latch, and there's a silver barrel here. And we need to put some nuts and bolts on, and we need to paint this up. And we also need to get rid of the Krups logo and the line and put the Mr. Fusion logo on. So let's have a go at getting rid of this logo. So the um, printing here is on both sides. It says Krups and there's a, a black line. This is the 223 coffee grinder. The 223A, which I've also got, doesn't have the line on. But I've decided what I'm going to do is use the 223 and try and get the line off. Um, not sure how it's going to colour match the lid, so we might have to respray it anyway. Hence using the less accurate one, apparently it was the 223A, which they used in the movie, and the lid is interchangeable. Um, the 223A I'm probably going to keep in my kitchen, because it's actually a European outlet power rated version. The uh, 223 is US, which is why I'm using that to make the prop. So we'll put that one to one side. Um, I'm going to try and get this line off with um, a polishing compound, because it's quite high sheen, I don't want to ruin it. Um, the product I'm going to use is T-Cut which is an automotive polishing, it's basically an abrasive polishing compound. There's also T-Cut scratch remover, which will probably dull the surface. Um, in fact, I've already tried a sample of T-Cut original, just to take that bit of the line off, and that seems to have worked really well, and it's still nice and glossy, so um, that's what we're going to do, which is just this one. So all we need to do is get a, a bit of cloth, Get a bit of that on there, and just give that a good polish to work it quite hard, but you can just see the line is just, um, just like erasing the line. There we go, so just give that a wipe. And it's gone, so we just need to do that and remove the logo. So that's nice and glossy and white all over. All of the logos have completely gone. Um, I've got the lid here, which I've now painted. So I painted that up with, the paint is still tacky, why it, that's why it's stuck on this tube. Um, I painted this with automotive, or at least um, from an automotive shop in the UK called Halfords, appliance gloss white, which seemed like a good white to use. First of all, plastic primer, and then this. It's a very bright white. It's not quite the same white as this, you can't really tell, but um, the, the grinder is definitely duller. The paint is still tacky, so I won't put that on. Um, for now, I'm just going to leave it like that. I was going to respray this exactly the same, 
Um, in the movie, in fact, the pieces are seamless as well, so the gap is filled in, uh, which won't happen with this. Although I have left um, holes in the lid, which should be to see there, so that I can bolt this onto it. That will mean taking the grinder to pieces, which we'll do in a moment. I've also got the correct decals for this, which are in this envelope here, which came uh, from Canada, which I bought on eBay. I'm not sure if these are the best ones to buy, but they appear to be the only ones. So we've got the correct Mr. Fusion decals to put the logo on. And we've got a silver cover for the hole in the grinder there. And the Mr. Fusion logo, which is so it's white on silver for that piece and a logo for each side and it looks like they've provided a spare one in case it goes wrong as well so these are clear so that the white of the grinder shows through and there's not another mismatch in the shade of white so now it's time to print the catch parts which are the silver barrel there and the red latch that latches onto the lid so i've extracted those parts from the main model and laid them out for 3d printing as best i can to uh, save support material and make sure there's no dodgy overhangs the main part that it's kind of unavoidable due to its shape. If you want to get hold of the model for this, you can find it on the downloads page of my website. This is an Autodesk 123D project, um, which is free software, so you can edit it and slice it for printing. I do charge a small amount for the models to help fund the projects on my website and in my YouTube channel. But if you'd like a 100% discount coupon for those, then have a look at patreon.com slash xrobots, which is my crowdfunding campaign. You'll also get some other exclusive benefits for as little as $1 a month, which include access to an exclusive live broadcast with me and access to a private subreddit to discuss things directly with me. Have a look at patreon.com slash xrobots. So let's take this grinder to bits and see how we can attach it to the base. It's also quite heavy because it is a grinder, so we might well take some of the mechanics out. So let's just take those pieces off. Um, it's got three screws on one side that come to pieces. Right, so it looks like there's a couple of clips just in the top there on each side. So if I'm very careful, there we go. So there's a spring that's fallen out, which there's, n there's a knob in the bottom here, which um, you push the cup into and that holds it and it's held against two rubber things which I think in fact might have to stay there uh, no probably we can take those off actually so we need to keep those rubber knobs to hold the cup and they seem to be attached to the whole mechanism and in fact I think they come off potentially so let's see Already um, removed the mains lead as I said in one of the previous parts so there's the actual grinder mechanism I'm wondering if that will fit in there but I'm not sure it will so it looks like we're gonna have to leave the whole mechanism in there um, because otherwise we, we don't get these these rubber clips which hold the cup in place which are attached to this this piece comes off the main grinder but then there's nothing to stop it wobbling because it's actually got no mounting points of its own. It relies on those two black mounting points to hold this whole thing straight. Um, but in any case, we can see um, can see where the feet are on the bottom. And we might be lucky to pull those out and use the mounting holes to stick. Um, we'll try and get a nut on the top and a bit of studding through the bottom that can go all the way through. So let's see what nuts and bolts we've got. So I found some M3 studding, which is a very small threaded rod. I've got plenty of M3 nuts. I'm gonna use lock nuts for the inside of the grinder and various washers and things. And the plan is to put a short piece of studding through each hole, put a lock nut on the other side with a washer, make sure the studding is the right length to fit through the lid of the base, put the grinder back together with these bits of studding um, sticking out of the bottom basically and then shove the grinder onto the base and put nuts on the bottom to hold it on tight so i put my studding into each one you can just see there and obviously the reason i've not just put a bolt in with the head there is because i can't actually push it through from the top so i've had to put these in and then with a very small pair of needle nose pliers 
use that to grip the lock nuts and um, use a, a mole grip to turn the thread to, to uh, screw it in there. So all of them are like that with the exception of one, which I'll have to be careful doesn't fall out whilst I'm putting the grinder back together. In fact, I'm going to put a small bit of tape over the head there to hold it in place so that it doesn't fall inside. There we go. And then once the grinder's together, we can put this onto the lid and I've left sufficient at the bottom there so we can obviously get the nuts on and grip this while we do the nut up. So the grinder is back together along with its studding sticking out the bottom. And now I have to be very careful remembering which one it is that's gonna fall inside if I push it too hard. It's that one. Now if we take this off and have a look underneath. Yeah, there we go. So we've got all of those four bits of studding poking through. And I think what I'll do is put some washers and nuts on before that all goes terribly wrong. So that is all bolted on. At some point I'll stick a disc of uh, white plastic in here so you can't see the nasty infill and the nuts. So there we go, there's my thing mounted on the base. So let's uh, wait for those other details to print and then we're almost there. So all my red parts have printed for the catch, so they're in this box currently, all suspended on wire and uh, bits of metal, and we're just going to leave those in there to um, get some acetone vapour, and then we'll quickly put the lid on before I breathe in the fumes, and um, hopefully that'll make them all smooth and glossy. So here's the finished Mr Fusion, complete with his decals. I've uh, printed the catch parts, which are printed in red, and those have been acetone vapour bath smoothed, the same as I did with the lid, so that they're nice and glossy. The um, metal thing you can see here was also printed in red and just sprayed up with some chrome paint I got from the pound shop. The catch actually works, so you depress this lever, and that allows it to flip back, and then the lid can open so that you can put banana skins and beer cans and whatever else inside and then that shuts with a satisfying click. Um, and obviously that's quite sturdy so you can pick the whole thing up and it doesn't come open until you press the little catch, that's the idea. Um, due to the acetone smoothing on the little lever thing that it catches on, um, it can kind of roll over it but the idea is you push this in and it flips back. It's fairly secure. So there we go, I'll be putting some more close-up and high-res pictures on the website. Have a look at xrobots.co.uk slash fusion. Also check out my Facebook page and subscribe to my YouTube channel for future updates. And don't forget to check out my Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash xrobots for some exclusive rewards.